During this presentation, I will be discussing the NIH stroke scale and how we can recognize symptoms of a stroke in a patient and what interventions we should take when a patient presents with stroke. On this slide, you can see the acronym FAST, which is the acronym that we use to recognize stroke symptoms in a patient. The F stands for facial drooping. The A stands for arm weakness. The S is for speech difficulty. And T is for time. Patients are instructed to call 911 immediately when they notice any symptoms of a stroke. Facial drooping either happens on the left or the right side of the face. And arm weakness can be uh, minimal weakness or it could be completely flaccid and it's always on one side of the body. Speech difficulty can be slurred speech or the patient could be aphasic. On this slide, you can see a sample stroke scale assessment, so I'll go through each category and talk a little bit about what they mean and how to assess it and what the point system means. So for level 1A, it's level of consciousness. If the patient's alert, they'll receive zero points. If they arouse to minor stimulation, they'll receive one point. And the points increase with increasing neurological deficits. So a patient that has a higher score on an NH stroke scale means they have more neuro deficits. 1B, we're going to ask the patient their month and age, the month, the current month and their age. If they answer both of these questions correctly, they'll receive zero points. For 1C, we ask them to blink their eyes and squeeze our hands. If they can perform these tasks, they'll get zero points. Section 2 is to test horizontal extraocular movements. So if they are able to perform extraocular movements, this is normal and they'll get zero points. Three is visual fields. If they have no visual loss, this is zero. Four is facial palsy. If their face is symmetrical, they'll receive zero points. If they have a facial droop, they'll receive one or two points depending on the severity. For section 5A, and 5B, we're testing the motor drift of the arms. So to test drift, we're going to have them, the patient hold their arms up above their head for 10 seconds. If one of the arms drops down, this is positive for a drift. And they'll receive zero points for no drift. For section 6, we're going to do the same thing with the legs, but this time they'll only have to hold for 5 seconds. Section 7 is testing limb ataxia. So we'll ask the patient to take their right leg and run their heel down their left shin. If they're able to do this, that means they don't have ataxia, so they'll get zero points for that. For section eight, we're testing sensation. If they have full sensation and no sensory loss, that's zero points. For section nine, we're testing language. If they're able to communicate effectively and they don't have any aphasia, they'll receive zero points. Section 10 tests for dysarthria. If they can cooperate with this command, they'll receive zero points. And the last section is testing for inattention, so no abnormality with this would be zero points. On this slide, we're going to discuss the interventions that we would do if a patient presents with a stroke. So the first thing that we would do is to get a CT scan, and this is so we can determine if the patient has a hemorrhagic or an ischemic stroke. If they have a hemorrhagic stroke, the um, possible interventions are surgical interventions to stop the bleeding. And once the patient's up on the floor, the main thing that we're going to do is control their blood pressure. We want to have their systolic blood pressure less than 140 to reduce the risk of any more bleeding. If the patient presents with an ischemic stroke, we'll determine if they're eligible for TPA. And in order for a patient to get TPA, they must arrive within three hours of the onset of symptoms. Other things that may exclude them from TPA is if their blood pressure is uncontrolled, if they are maintaining blood pressures above 185, or if they have any history of bleeding, we won't give TPA. And when a patient has an ischemic stroke, we want to maintain their blood pressure systolic 140 to 180. This increases perfusion to the area of the brain that's affected. And it's also possible that they'll do a clot retrieval, which is in a cerebral angiogram. And this is when they go up through the femoral artery and retrieve the clot in the brain. On this slide, you can see my references. I hope this presentation was helpful to you to learn a little bit about the NIH stroke scale 
and how we would assess symptoms and what interventions we would do for a patient with stroke.